Hey everybody, welcome back, and now we're ready for part two of our thesaurus thing. Um, what I did here, just as a quick thing, is I just installed into Brave um, a JSON viewing uh, extension to make that a little easier, not that we're really going to use it that much. Um, also, incidentally, I've been using Brave for a while now, I'm pretty happy with it, but if anyone has better suggestions, I like Brave because it was supposed to be pretty secure and privacy-centered and still work pretty well, um, but I have a couple issues with it, so I'm open to new suggestions. But back to our, um, back to our little project. We've got, what we had here is we got our key, our URL, we saw that we could, to get the synonyms, we first, a uh, little function, and again, this is just putting up all the stuff together that we learned in our earlier videos with a couple of new calls. Um, so we're going to get, do our, do our URL, you know, or get, we're going to get the URL, which is going to be the base URL plus our key plus the word we're looking for. That's going to, um, we're going to, on the buffer it returns, that's what with current buffer does, cut out the stuff at top, and then get the string back. We're then going to convert it into JSON using ELISP's JSON parse string. So now that we have this in ELISP, we just have to get out the, um, we have to get out the part of this which is our um, our synonyms. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to put this in. I'm just going to do an extra variable so we can look at things. And the first part here is notice this entire thing is an array from the open bracket to the close on the bottom. So we're going to use array reference of the JSON response and the zeroth item. And then we're just going to return that temp, just, just so we can see it for now. Run that. Run that. Taking a little time, but um, okay. And notice that it got rid of the brackets. We now have a hash table. And in this hash table, we're going to want to pull out meta, because looking over here, we want to, from this hash table, we just got rid of that. Now here we want to pull out the meta, which is going to be another hash table, which is going to have these synonyms, which is a list. So let's do that. So um, our word list is going to be, we're going to do, we're going to pull out meta, that key, from there. And from that, we're going to pull out the synonyms. We could have done that in two steps. And we're not quite done with this yet, but we're going to pull these two out. So word list, return that. And now if we run this, and notice at the bottom, or notice right over there, we've got adjudicator, arbiter, arbitrator, judge, and referee. We're almost there. The only thing is we just want the list. You know, we just want the array, that whatever list. We just want those items. We don't want it to be an array of arrays, excuse me. So what we're going to want to do one other thing here is we're going to want to, from that, just get out the zeroth item. And did I mess up something? Probably. There we go. Execute it down there. And now, there we have it. We got our synonyms. And our synonyms are very simply going to be that vector. Now, I know that I'm going to want this to be or an array. I'm going to want this to be a... Um, a list. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use map car, which is going to just iterate over the entire list. We're just going to pull the identity on each one, which is not going to make any changes to it. But notice that that just gives it to us now as a list. It's probably a slicker way of doing it than this, but it works. It's fine. Um, but we're pretty much uh, we're mostly there. What we want to want to do. We've got this list. So now what we have to do 
is we now have to um, be able to select an item from this list to replace where we're at. And to do that, we can use something called completing read. And so if we use completing read and let me just put this in here, notice what it does. Whoops, okay, did I mess something up there? Oh, and I have to give it a prompt. Let's go sin for now. And now notice what we can see. It gets sin, so I got my prompt. And then I can select, and it returns what I select. Now, um, I think if you use things like, oh, what is it? Um, there are those different selections. Like I'm using, um, what is it? Um, Ah, I'm blanking. Um, consult and um, actually, let me just. Completion frameworks. Yeah, I'm using, yeah, Vertigo, Orderless, Margin Allen, Consult. Um, get rid of that. Um, and one of the nice things about that family of products of that family of things um, is that they all build on the Emacs core stuff so if I just use the regular completing read it's going to give me the nice orderless features consult features vertical features all of that's going to work really well together whereas if I use one of the earlier completion frameworks and now I'm even forgetting what the earlier completion frameworks are um, God, I'm totally blanking on them now. But um, they'll have their own complete competing, competing, complete. They'll have their own competing, competing read, um, which, yeah, you, um, you know, and you'd have to work within their ecosystem. So I kind of like using this vertical and all this stuff because it's all, I mean, I guess this is bothering me. So bear with me for a second. Um, alternatives, alternatives yeah. yeah, like, like um, you know, select, um, uh, I complete vertical mode is a built in one, so it'll work with that. Um, okay, I don't want to take too much time, but, but there are the other older competing one for uh, things for, for completion frameworks, but anyway. That's, That's how we can select one of these. So we can just really write a very simple function now. Let's just call it word. Can I do the word to synonym? Let's just call it. And we'll give it a, you know, n interactive p because this one we want to call interactively what we're going to do now is we're going to and i'll do the let's start because i want to use them we're going to let our word in question be the current word and the current word is just the word at or near the point you know so that's kind of what we're looking for there um so is that uh different okay right um so the word so then our word list is going to be to be get synonyms get synonyms of the word Sorry. And then the new word is going to be a completing read. And what we're going to call this replacement of the word list. So now we've got our new word. <laughs> and so very simply, we're going to go backward a word. We're going to kill word one, kill one word, and we're going to insert new word. And that should do it. 
So basically, let's see how this works. So now if we were typing away the hero, word to synonym, uh, god, icon, or idol. So if I just control G out of it, it's not going to replace it with anything. But if I do word to synonym here and I'm going to choose idol, I have now replaced hero with idol. And so I've got this really easy way now in order to just use synonyms to replace synonyms. So we've just got one more little thing to do for this. Let's just clean this up a little bit, clean that up, clean that up. And so we can make this into a mode just like we did before. And again, we can do this, well, why don't we say um, define minor mode, which we did before, and we'll call it Z sin mode or Z sin mode. Z synonym mode. Um, but we're going to do something different here. We're going to give it a key map. I'll explain this in a second, kind of. I'm just going to do control TZ, and that's going to call word to synonym. Okay, so that will, whoops, now we'll save it. That will define our mode. So we'll run that, and we have the mode. Now, so it's basically all we're doing with this particular mode is we have all of these functions defined. And um, what we're going to do here is we're going to give to it a key map. And I just copied this out of like the making a mode documentation, making a minor mode. Um, so I just copied and pasted. We're making a map, um, which is going to be a sparse key map. I guess that's if you just have a few keys to define. And then within this map, we are then going to bind this key. Um, and then we're returning the map, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, that's going to be returned into this key map, um, and that's it. So now let's go to, let's go to temphello.org, and this is uh, an org file. This has, has stuff in it, and of course I can just do word to synonym here, and it works, but if I go into Zsyn mode, the hero, or the umpire, and I do, what is it, control CZ, and it's like, okay, um, the judge, and it's done. Let's kill that buffer. And one other thing that we can do is we can say, let's add a hook, org mode hook, so what this will do as a final step for this, let's save this, is when I go into an org mode file, <laughs> it will select Z synonym mode. So let's go to a temp directory, test.org, and this, well, let's make sure it's an org mode. And this is a test of finding, whoops, uh, CZ, oops. Control is CZ. That's undefined. Did I not execute that? Okay. Reload that. And now it works. Uh, doom, finding, okay. <laughs> I'm holding. Uh, okay, maybe not the best synonyms, but that's not the point. Um, but that's, kill that. Um, and that's basically it. So that's a little bit more on making the mode, how we can put a key map in. And again, I just copied and pasted it over. I don't know all the in and outs of key maps. Um, I was using, I don't even remember the name of the mode I was using for this. Um, but really simple to do. It's just step by step. It's just, you know, uh, the, the big Emacs adjustments to summarize this. Obviously, integrating it as a mode and being able to do, an, you know, like, this type of hook um, if you want. But the other big thing, other than just 
you know, looking around in the documentations and web searching to find things like uh, JSON parse string or, you know, and remember all the help um, is in the info pages. You know, so there's the ELIS manual, the ELIS intro, you know, so all, all of this is in here, um, but it might be hard to find all of it. Um, but it's finding all of them and using all of them. But I think the conceptually interesting one is this with current buffer, not, not the specific call, but the idea that, um, you know, when you're working in a regular programming language, um, you're working in the data structures like, oh, it's an array, it's a list, it's a hash table, it's a whatever, you know, and you end up you know, and I guess strings are analogous in a way. Oh, it's a string, and I have to parse it and manipulate it. But in Emacs, you have all of those, but the fundamental one is the buffer. And it's not just, yes, it's a buffer where I'm editing, but the buffer, you know, like functions return buffers, and you can manipulate them and search in them and change them, and it's kind of like a string on steroids. All right, so that's a quick little two-parter on... Um, how to do a thesaurus, a uh, little thesaurus mode, use web stuff. Um, do not know where I'm going to go from here in terms of the ELISP series, if I'm going to do other Emacs videos, or who knows. Um, but I hope you enjoy this little series if it doesn't continue, um, and, or if it does continue. And that's it for today. Okay, take care.